The stories of these two women are legendary, but few people realize that Juana was the elder sister to the one woman who literally was at the heart of England's break with the Catholic Church, Catherine of Aragon. These two sisters saw each other only one time after their teenage years, but yet their stories are eerily similar. Controlled by two of the most formidable monarchs ever to rule in not only Spain, but Europe, their parents were the powerhouse couple known as Ferdinand and Isabella. Yes, the Ferdinand and Isabella of the Spanish Inquisition, Crusade, and New World Exploration fame. They were not a duo to be tangled with, especially Isabella, who had come to power as the Queen of Castile in her own right. She took the throne in one fell swoop without the aid of her husband, and she ruled Castile with the awe and reverence of her people, much to the chagrin of her jealous and domineering husband. So it's no wonder that Queen Isabella managed to produce two of the most notable sisters in history. Isabella was raised by a mother who suffered nearly the same fate as her daughter Juana. Her mother was the second wife of King John II of Castile. Her father died when she was young, and her half-brother Henry IV shoved Isabella, her mother, and younger brother away in a castle for years while he took over Castile. But Henry was childless, and the one daughter he did have was wildly rumored to be the child of another man. And he, she was not acknowledged as the rightful heir to the throne of Castile, even though, contrary to most all other countries, Castile allowed a woman to inherit the throne in her own right. But when she was 13, Isabella and her young brother came to Henry's court, where he tried to commandeer their futures, even if he didn't trust them. Isabella's younger brother Alfonso died under suspicious circumstances when he was only a teenager, leaving Henry's dissenters to rally around Isabella. Henry tried to force Isabella into an arranged marriage, but Isabella was a force to be reckoned with, and she married the man of her choice in secret. That man was Ferdinand of Aragon. When Henry died, Isabella seized the reins of power in Segovia without the help of her husband who was away. And while she was clever enough to disguise her decisions behind Ferdinand's name, it is clear that Isabella was the brains behind much of the success of Castile and Aragon during their time on the throne. But Isabella wasn't just clever, she was exacting. And with four daughters, she made sure they were all very well educated and capable of leading as she was. She had them educated in much the same way she had her son educated, versed in several languages, arts, government, and all such things. This is certainly evident in Juana, who spoke many languages, as well as Catherine, who led England's armies successfully against the Scottish while Henry VIII was away fighting in France. Isabella was particularly close to Juana, but always felt that she was not pious enough. As the monarch responsible for the inception of the Spanish Inquisition trials, she couldn't tolerate Juana's lack of interest in religion, and her efforts to reform her rebellious daughter were just as crazy as the trials endured by the Castilian people during the Inquisitions. It's reported that Isabella resorted to a torture method called La Cuerda, where Juana was hung in the air by ropes and weighed down by her feet. Not exactly the stuff fairy tales are made of. Despite all of this, Isabella seems attached to Juana and had a hard time seeing her daughter off when at the age of 16 she married Philip of Flanders. Their story would go down in history as one of the most violent and crazy love stories of all time. And her demise would be years in the making, a long, sad, lonely life of isolation and imprisonment. Isabella's relationship with Catherine was different. Catherine was the youngest child of Ferdinand and Isabella and was named after, ironically, her English great-grandmother Catherine of Lancaster, daughter of John of Gaunt and Constance of Castile. Catherine's early years were somewhat nomadic as her parents were busy waging war for the Iberian Peninsula. Despite their power struggles, Catherine's powerful parents had grown to love each other over the years of their marriage. They were both ambitious and pious and earned the respect of their people, which was due mostly to the popularity of Queen Isabella. While her father was ever the politician scheming and plotting, Isabella was nothing if not genuine and fervent. Catherine inherited a good mix of these traits of both of her parents. Catherine, as well as her siblings, often traveled around accompanying her parents on military campaigns against the Moors and was present to see her parents' victory over them and the triumph of Christopher Columbus by the time she was seven. Catherine was educated in the same way her brothers and sisters were, to be a ruler, not just a queen consort. 
She was given a classical education, and even though their mother taught them to be pious and loyal to their future husbands, they were certainly never raised to be decorative ornaments to a king. This would be a role that Catherine would take with remarkable ease in the war with Scotland in 1513 while Henry VIII was fighting in France. The people of England loved and praised her much as the people of Castile did her mother. Even though Catherine was the youngest of Isabella and Ferdinand's, she was one of the first of their children to be betrothed to the eldest child of the new Tudor dynasty in England, to Henry VII's oldest son, Arthur. This suited in Ferdinand especially as England and Spain had a mutual enemy, France. And even though her soon-to-be in-laws wanted the four-year-old Catherine to come live in their court, Isabella would not hear of that. Isabella was concerned about the instability in England and preferred that Catherine be by her side for safety and to oversee her education. It was in these years that Catherine and Juana would form a bond with their mother and learn of Isabella's fierce and yielding Catholicism. Catherine took to the faith just as her mother did, but as we know, Juana showed little interest in religion, and at the time even questioned it. This angered and concerned Isabella, who was hell-bent on making sure Juana was persuaded otherwise. In 1501, Isabella sadly parted with her last child. By this time, she had lost two children in death, as well as grandchildren, and Isabella was reluctant to put Catherine on a ship to England, knowing the dangers of the sea and all that could lay before her. Isabella was falling into depression after so many losses, she grew even more religious, which can hardly be believed, and her health began to fail. Isabella died in 1504, before ever actually seeing Catherine become Queen of England, or hear of her marriage to Henry VIII, or her successful triumph on the battlefield in Henry's name. Her last correspondence to Catherine was over her concern for her situation after Arthur's sudden death in 1502. In her will, Isabella left her kingdom and throne to Juana and her son Charles, not even acknowledging the existence of her hated husband Philip. In 1506, Juana and Catherine saw each other for the last time when Juana traveled with Philip to claim her birthright in Castile. They were stranded by weather in England, where King Henry VII threw a lavish banquet in their honor, and the two sisters, in dire situations, set eyes on each other for the last time. Juana, preoccupied with her ongoing struggle for power with her husband and father for the Kingdom of Castile, and Catherine, who is practically penniless and destitute over the ongoing feud with her father and King Henry over her unpaid dowry and proposed marriage to Henry VIII. Eventually, Philip and Ferdinand plotted to oust Juana, and each used her as a pawn for their own purposes and power. Poor Catherine suffered as well at the hands of Henry VIII. Unable to give Henry the male heir he so desired, he concocted the most elaborate plan to be rid of Catherine, whom the English people loved. She was increasingly shut up and held captive in dank, decrepit castles in England, while Henry divorced himself from not only her, but all that England had formerly known. She died alone in Kimbolton Castle, still proclaiming that she was the rightful wife of Henry VIII. Barred from contact with her daughter Mary, she died on January 7, 1536. On her deathbed, she prayed that God would set Henry back on the right path and forgive him for wrongdoing her. Nineteen years later, her sister Juana would also die alone in Tordesillas, forbidden by her son Charles from having any visitors. It was a sad end for the brilliant daughters of Isabella, one of the most formidable queens of all time. <laughs>